Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you are tracking for you. Indian PM Modi inaugurates World Dairy Summit, Lord's Role of Women and Small-Scale Farmers. Mothers struggle to feed newborn babies in Pakistan flood zone. Death toll near 1,400. And former Afghan President Karzai tweets his support of protesting female students. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday inaugurated the World Dairy Summit 2022 in Greater Noida City and hailed the role of women and small-scale farmers to make India the largest producer of dairy products in the world. The four-day event will cover different aspects of the dairy industry and will witness participation of more than 1,500 delegates from 50 countries. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday inaugurated the International Dairy Federation World Dairy Summit 2022 in Greater Noida City, an annual congregation of global industry leaders, experts, farmers and policy planners. PM Modi said India is emphasizing on universal vaccination of animals and announced that by 2025, the country will vaccinate 100% of the animals against foot and mouth disease and brucellosis. He also said Indian scientists have prepared an indigenous vaccine for lumpy skin disease and efforts are underway to control it. The Prime Minister hailed small-scale farmers and the role of women in the dairy sector, contributing to 70% of the workforce. He said due to their collective efforts, India has become the largest producer of dairy products in the world. या तीन पशु हैं इन्हीं छोटे किसानों के परिश्रम और उनके पशुधन की वजह से आज भारत पूरे विश्व में सबसे ज्यादा दुग्ध उत्पादन करने वाला देश है the four-day summit is expected to witness participation of more than 1,500 delegates from 50 countries and will cover different aspects of the dairy industry. Last time, India hosted the International Dairy Congress in 1974. And pregnant women in Pakistan are being forced to make risky journeys across flood water just to give birth, while mothers of newborn babies are struggling to feed them. The unprecedented flooding has affected 33 million people and killed more than 1,390 across the country. Ayesha Arbelo had labor pains as the flood waters hit her village in Pakistan just over a week ago. Her worried father rushed her to hospital, where she gave birth to her daughter Shehzadi by C-section. The family are now sheltering at a camp some 50 miles from her hometown of Mehar, in Pakistan's hardest-hit Sindh province, with others whose homes are now underwater. Aisha's husband is in Punjab province for work. Life is difficult at the camp, where hundreds are living in cramped conditions and on handouts, and they have to sometimes remain hungry for one or two days. <laughs> The United Nations Population Fund says 138,000 of the women displaced by Pakistan's floods are pregnant. It's racing against time to help the 40,000 expecting to give birth this month, sending mobile teams and setting up temporary hospitals. Meanwhile, authorities in Dadu in Sindh plan to breach the country's Indus Highway, a key transport link to allow water to flow and prevent flooding in the town. An official said on Sunday that 90% of the Dadu district was inundated and was still under threat. At the moment, 90% uh, of district Dadu is under water. It is inundated. 
only three major towns i would say uh, dadu which is still under threat we are trying to protect it by erecting a ring embankment the unprecedented floods from a record monsoon and glacier melt in the north of pakistan have hit 33 million people and killed over 1390 across the country washing away homes roads railways livestock and crops pakistan estimates the damage at 30 billion us dollars and the government has blamed the flooding on climate change and more on news from pakistan opposition pti party senior vice president fawad choudhury has criticized the election commission of pakistan for postponing the scheduled by polls just few days ahead of the election date terming the excuse of floods as lame Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf PTI senior vice president Fawad Chaudhry has lashed out at the Election Commission of Pakistan ECP for postponing the scheduled by polls just few days ahead of the election date terming the excuse of floods as lame addressing reporters on Sunday Fawad stated that it was strange that ruling PMLN president Shehbaz Sharif was sworn in as prime minister of Pakistan on the day when he was to be charged in a corruption case he blamed beside being biased the poll body is also suffering from an administrative crisis and incompetence as it had declared 40 lakh voters dead and is now postponing the elections after spending billions of rupees out of public money jo shalab tha ye to kam se kam 2 3 mahino se ye mamla jo hai wo jari hai aur aapke samne halat kharab ho rahe the to aapko khayal nahi aaya us waqt jab hum keh rahe the कि ये जो नोटिफिकेशन हैं गलत हैं उसको नहीं माना गया Defense Minister Khwaja Asif on Sunday said that the general elections will not be held as per the demands of PTI chief Imran Khan but the country will go to polls at its designated time in 2023. He said Khan's strategy is all about destroying the establishment adding that since no confidence motion to oust him from power has become successful he wants the establishment to support him. Well moving on residents of Muzaffarabad district in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over frequent load shedding inflation and unemployment which have afflicted their lives they blame they have suffered decades of exploitation owing to skewed policies framed by Pakistan Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have expressed they are upset over frequent load shedding, soaring inflation and rising unemployment due to Pakistan government's policies which have fueled a sense of deprivation amongst the educated youth in the illegally occupied region. Residents in Muzaffarabad city said they face load shedding of 4 to 6 hours in the day and 6 to 8 hours in the night which disrupts daily activities and studies of their children. They also highlighted that apart from soaring inflation there have been incidents of black marketing of food items and shortage of wheat and they are being forced to pay double the prices for essential commodities jab ke bijli ki load shedding ki wajah se shehron ki zindagi adhira ho kar reh gayi hai muzaffarabad shehar mein din ke auqat pe 4 se 6 ghante aur sham ke auqat pe 6 se 8 ghante load shedding ki ja rahi hai jab ke kai ilakon mein muzaffarabad ke us pe zyada zarurat hai kharab hai despite several protests over these issues in recent months Pakistan government has continued to ignore the people's plight. Locals have long blamed Islamabad for depriving them of their basic rights, claiming the agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped. And former Afghan president Hamid Karzai has called on the ruling Taliban to reopen girls high schools that has largely remained closed after the Islamist group went back on promises to open them in March. Former Afghan President Hamid Karzai called on the ruling Taliban on Sunday to reopen girls high schools and applauded female students in the eastern province of Pakhtia who residents said have been publicly protesting against the measure. The voice of Pakhtia's female students is the voice of all our girls and of Afghanistan said Karzai who remained in Kabul after the Taliban took over just over a year ago on Twitter. We ask the acting Islamic government to open the schools he said. The ruling Taliban made a sudden U-turn on promises to open girls high schools in March, leaving some female students who had turned up to class in tears. 
Authorities in Paktia said this week that girls' high schools had reopened, though the move had not been officially approved. The Taliban have said that they are working on a plan to reopen high schools for girls but have not specified when. Primary schools aged girls and female university students are still able to attend class. Most teenage girls now have no access to classrooms and thousands of women have been pushed out of the workforce due to the growing restrictions and Afghanistan's economic crisis, international development agencies say. Western governments have stepped up their condemnation for the Taliban widening elimination of women from public life. Many Afghan women have expressed frustration and called for Taliban authorities to respect their rights. Well, moving on to news from Sri Lanka, the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, on Sunday announced a 60 million U.S. dollars aid package for crisis-hit Sri Lanka. The island nation is facing acute shortages of essentials, including food, fuel and medicines due to a lack of foreign exchange needed to pay for the imports. The chief of the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, on Sunday announced a 60 million U.S. dollars aid package for Sri Lanka. U.S. aid head Samantha Powers said it would provide 40 million U.S. dollars for fertilizer imports and 20 million dollars for humanitarian needs to tackle the country's deep financial crisis. Samantha Power added the Sri Lankan people united by their conviction came together not long ago to demand change. And she wants to reiterate that the United States is right here standing with the island nation in this hour of need. The country of 22 million people is facing its worst economic turmoil since independence from Britain in 1948. Foreign exchange reserves have dropped to historic lows, leaving the country struggling to pay for essential imports of fuel, food and medicine. Sri Lanka secured a staff-level agreement for a 2.9 billion US dollars bailout from the International Monetary Fund earlier this month, but faces an uphill battle to negotiate repayments of billions of dollars with creditors. And unwavered by the Down syndrome, an Indian girl is excelling in yoga despite a disability and is now called the rubber girl of the country. She was awarded National Child Award for her exceptional achievement in yoga by Prime Minister Narendra Modi earlier this year. Unwavered by Down syndrome, 14-year-old Anvi Zanzarukya is excelling in yoga despite her disability and is now called the rubber girl of the country. The uncertainty persisted until her mother realized that their child, who has almost 75% intellectual disability, is blessed with elastic-like flexibility to bend her body. Anvi can perform more than 200 yoga asana, also called postures. According to Anvi's father Vijay Zanzarukya, she has memorized the names of a few postures and she can perform some when she is shown the drawing of a few postures or is being told orally about it. He recalls his angst as a parent of bringing up a child with disabilities. लेकिन आज जो सफर तय करके जो रबर गल बनी मानो दिव्यांग में से जो रबर गल के सफर तय करने के बाद हमको आज ऐसा पता चला कि ये बच्ची योगा के लिए जिंदा है और हम उसको योगा के लिए जिंदा रख रहे हैं। Earlier this year, Anvi, who hails from Western Surat city, backed the National Child Award for her exceptional achievement in yoga by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. She has also won multiple medals at national level yoga competitions where there is no separate category for disabled persons. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.